ended up being one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me in my life. I'm really freaking out. I think they're like trying to poison me. As fucked up as it is, it's all intertwined and interlocked. Like the woman who stole my couch. Let me talk to the EMT. Mind you, we're on FaceTime, we're looking at each other. She was okay. So the EMT takes the phone. So now I'm reading all this legal shit 24 hours a day, not sleeping, not eating, not drinking, losing weight. So my sister grabbed the phone and was like, I don't know who this is. That's not my sister. She would never talk like this. And she hung up. But I signed. I signed the employee handbook. I signed my name on that dotted line. Because they called me and they screamed at me and they told me to delete all my posts. You serious? It was weird, oh right? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I do care, Dana. I do care about your psychosis. Okay, so for anyone in California, if you are wondering when you get fired, or if you get written up, or there's an investigation pending against you, they have to tell you three to five days before they suspend you. And if you disagree with your suspension, you can have a hearing. So according to Danny Victor, it all started when she worked at Wally's. She was one of a few black people in that restaurant, and she said that she experienced uh, racism, and sexual harassment, and pretty much bullying, and she overheard even conversations um, that were disparaging to other people of color. So she says the reason for her termination was a lie, which was pretty much that a frequent, guest, a frequent guest at the restaurant claimed that she showed him explicit images on her phone, which she claims is not true, didn't happen, and they just came up with that to have a reason to fire her because they've already been looking for a reason. She was told this by coworkers, and that was their reason. She says that she's suing them for that reason, specifically for wrongful termination and for harassment. And then kind of spiraled into her not trusting her attorneys. They are, you know, not filing things correctly. They're filing things under false company names. She did not want them representing her. So she then started representing herself. Oh, and by the way, you're going to work at a restaurant. You're going to get sexually harassed, discriminated against. You're going to hire this lawyer. You're going to think these lawyers are good people. They're not going to be good people. And then you're going to figure out that the judge isn't a good people. And then you're going to realize that a lot of judges aren't good people. You're going to think that you can take them on when you really at the time can't. And you're going to almost get murdered. But you are tough and you are strong and you are going to persevere and you survive. And then you move home. So here's my thing with all of this. First off, if you think your lawyers are corrupt, they're liars, they're working with the enemy, why don't you just fire them and hire new lawyers? Second off, you claimed that you did not sign any pa paperwork. They're trying to put you in arbitration over false pretenses. When in your first video, you said that you didn't read anything, you just signed all this stuff. And what you signed was an arbitration agreement and you didn't even realize it. So you saying that that didn't happen, but then in your own video, in your own words, you said it did. And you could have easily watched your own video back and seen that. But they want you to read a whole employee handbook in half an hour and then sign all the documentation and then immediately go on the floor to work your shift. So he comes in, he's like, all right, five minutes, and then you're getting on the floor. So I just start signing shit. I'm not reading anything. Truth be told, sign, initial, sign, initial, sign, initial. Well. In that signing is an arbitration agreement. And if anyone doesn't know what an arbitration agreement is, it basically says, if you ever try to sue us, we're sending you arbitration. And you're going to shut the fuck up. You're not going to be able to sue us because you're going to arbitration. The owners of Wally's, when they're the ones that have literally falsified court fucking documents, they have forged my, forged my signatures on at least 10 different papers, including an arbitration agreement that they are binding me to. Right now, you guys, my case is with Jams. Jams is corrupt too. Um, in arbitration. I, I didn't sign to be in arbitration. I sent multiple emails, which will all be posted, stating, I did not agree to this. I'm not doing this. You are in an arbitration with illegal court documents. You cannot do that. And in return, they tried to kill me. Even the most basic things, like you signing stuff that you claimed didn't, you didn't sign and that they forged your signature on, that you, they can take you to court. The, the defamation of it all, the slander of it all. She's calling people racist. She's calling people frauds, liars, all this stuff, saying that they tried to kill her. I signed my name on that dotted line. And then comes the part about her allergic reaction that she claims was actually them trying to poison her through her air vents. She had called me at like 6 a.m. my time, which was like 3 a.m. her time, and she's like, I have a rash all over my body. I'm really freaking out. I think they're like trying to poison me. She keeps calling me, so I'm like, oh, there's probably an emergency. Like, let me figure out. So I picked up her FaceTime. And her tongue is swollen so big to the point she's talking like, Ugh. I'm pretty sure, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, but I do have a medical assistant license. I'm pretty sure you are having an allergic reaction. You need some type of EpiPen. 
Adderall can cause side effects that result in skin problems such as rash, ray nose phenomena, and hypersensitivity and allergic reactions. Most symptoms subside when you decrease or discontinue use of Adderall. She's been very open about using Adderall. And she's also been very open about all the anxiety that she's been having because of this case and the stress and her lack of sleep. I fell asleep at my computer desk at 5.45 in the morning, woke back up at 6.30. So I'm rolling on 15 minutes of sleep. The fact that her mind was like, nope, couldn't possibly be this well-known um, side effect of this drug. No, they are working with the apartment company and they're putting something in the vents so they can kill me and my dogs. And there's a reason that I didn't have any next door neighbors, which who knows if that's true or not, we don't know. But it's crazy that that is what she thought of. It got to a point where she didn't even believe that it was her own sister on the phone and that her one of her best friends out in LA was working with them. And there's other little discrepancies that I could easily debunk with a simple Google search, like the whole thing about her being suspended and her supposed to have 72 hours of notice. No, they can suspend you and fire you right then and there. And that doesn't even make sense because if I'm at work and I cut somebody out today, how are they supposed to know? And they suspend me pending, you know, decision on what to do with me. How are they supposed to know 72 hours ago that I was going to do that? to let me know that they're gonna suspend me. It doesn't make sense. If I do it today, what are they supposed to do? Let me come in to work for the next three days? Meanwhile, I just cut somebody out. Shouldn't they just suspend me and, and or fire me immediately? I, that doesn't even, it, that's, that doesn't make sense. Also, the part about her complaint being closed out with the labor board without her signature, you only sign after they finalize your complaint. Like, they, th they can throw that out if you don't file the proper complaint. So now the couch situation. She had this super expensive, super plush couch that she just wanted to change the color to. But she hired this company and these people came, got her couch, they changed it. When they brought it back, she just had a feeling it was not the same couch. Her and her friends, her sister, they said this is not the same couch. And not only that, her attorneys are working with this woman in some way. Also, Wells Fargo is into this because they drained the money out of her bank account, allegedly. I got a message in my email that my bank account from Wells Fargo was overdrawn. And I'm like, overdrawn? So I go on and it was overdrawn by thousands and thousands of dollars. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I go on my email that says they closed uh, a case. And I'm like, what case? So I, when this woman robbed my couch, she charged me over two grand for services. I paid her the two grand with my Visa Wells Fargo card. I opened a claim, okay? They credited my account. Wells Fargo has 10 days to close a claim. Six, seven months later in September, I get a message that the case is closed and they took all the money out of my account, leaving me with pennies. So I call them and I go, how did you guys give me my money, close the case, and then give this woman back money for stealing from me? So this is pretty simple. If you have ever had a debit card and you disputed a transaction because you know it was wrong or something fraudulent showed up on your bank statements and you wanted to dispute it, you dispute it with the banking company. They'll give you a temporary credit of the amount that you're disputing and they'll decide if they want you to keep it or if they're going to reverse it and side with the merchant. So they closed the case and they sided with the merchant who's this lady who apparently allegedly stole her couch and now she had no money. So really what probably happened, she didn't really have much in her bank account to begin with and so them taking that out drained it and, and she had no money afterwards which is no surprise because she's financially irresponsible. This is a terrible idea. So. <laughs> So what happens if I don't find a job and I can't avoid rent? You have to leave. And then you have to come buy rent out here. Start over. Because you're not going to be Oh, able to I would never. So chances are it wasn't this huge conspiracy where they were out to get her and fuck up her credit. And you know what? Actually, I just remembered her sister Gabby did a story time once where she said that her twin, Danny, used her name and social security to open a credit card in her name. This isn't super important, but it's something that I notice and it kind of like strikes me as weird, but she puts a lot of emphasis on this being the um, restaurant owned by the owners of guests. And then she also puts a lot of emphasis on the apartment that she lived at being owned by Jeff Green, who's a billionaire. And she's even like in her text messages has stated that like she demands they get her another apartment since they're trying to kill her at that apartment because Jeff Green is a billionaire. There's some like arrogant and you know, egotistical element to her constantly throwing that out there. I think this is all a combination of her, what I believe is paranoia paired with, you know, some entitlement sprinkled with a little bit of slightly stupid, because if these people are trying to kill you, why are you asking these same people to get you another place? Duh. Like who would do that? 
this is just my opinion, but I feel like whatever she's going through is obviously powered or enabled by her ego because she loves to think that, you know, these super rich, powerful people are out to get her. How It's very Jesse Smollett, first of all, but did anyone notice how it started with um, her job and then it became a fight between her and the, you know, U.S. federal government? So as of now, she's taken all her old videos down and she is manifesting a new settlement because she rejected the last one and now she's given up. So she, now she wants a new settlement, but she's titling her video as if she won, which she still doesn't make sense. Um, she wants to settle. She also recently posted a video kind of sort of admitting her Adderall addiction, which also was not her fault, of course.